Ocelot got a question, says, Hey Abe, as someone trying to get into the industry, I feel discouraged by my age as well as imposter syndrome. Do you have any resources to find or at least collaborate with people? Thank you. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you, man? Because age is usually, usually not a problem. Sometimes very, very young like artists might have a little bit of an issue. I'm not, dude, dude, you're perfectly fine. No. Uh, 34 is perfectly fine. So, um, imposter syndrome is unfortunately very real. And um, I, I was looking at... Um, let me let me go full screen. I feel this is uh, kind of important. So, imposter syndrome is a very damaging thing because we know ourselves the best, right? Like, technically, we should know ourselves the best. So, imposter syndrome works or is so damaging to us because we know all of our weaknesses. We know exactly where we are lacking, exactly the areas of opportunity that we are, uh, that we need to, to improve, right? So the first thing you need to know about imposter syndrome is that no one else is seeing you the way you are seeing yourself. So people will see you in a way, way better light than you're actually seeing yourself because we are very harsh with ourselves. So once you understand that, and once you understand that that's just like an intrusive thought that we have on our mind, you can just kind of like not ignore it. I wouldn't say ignore is the right word, but you can just understand that it's happening. Like you're getting those, let's call it negative feelings. And then you're just like, okay, I have those feelings. I'm getting that like inner message, but I'm not going to listen to it. I'm going to just keep working on my stuff. I am going to recognize that this is only myself talking about me. So no one else is telling me this. Therefore, I should not listen to these thoughts. It's a, it's a sort of like, um, M not, not sort of meditative, but like psychological things that you need to train as well to, to just not listen to that. I personally have developed a sort of uh, like shortcut to that. Uh, in, in Mexico, we call it me vale madre, which is uh, I don't give a shit, right? So whenever I get those thoughts, it's like, I don't give a shit. I, I don't care. Like even if I'm an imposter, I don't care. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm just going to have fun. If I can help people, that's great. If I can make a living, that's great. And that's it. So if you start going into this sort of like, uh, I don't care, kind of like Hakuna Matata sort of stuff, then it becomes a little bit easier, right? Like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Let's say you get an opportunity at the studio and you go into the studio and then your skills are not up to the level that the studio was expecting and you are an imposter because you are a fake artist and you you didn't like a, like did or you didn't do the things that they were expecting you to do. Hey, well, that's life. You are probably going to be fired. You go, keep on learning, and then the next time that you get an opportunity, you do it better. I've had that happen to me. I've had clients or projects that I've worked for that I did a horrible job, and I'm never going to be able to talk to those guys straight in the face again because I failed them. But hey, that's just how it works. You need to fail a little bit or a lot, and then you keep going and, and becoming better and better. Hopefully that helps us a lot. Now, as for collaboration, just a, like a quick thing, go on to Discord. There's so many people out there that could collaborate with you. So if you want to do like a little environment and you need multiple people to be working on something, then that's a good place. If you need an animator, you're probably going to find someone there or a rigger. So yeah, just just uh, just try to, to do that. <laughs> Eduardo! Why are you asking me those questions, Eduardo? Um, I mean, it's a very... Like, if you go by the rule or by the book, then, of course, that's not right. However, however, most companies, most software companies know that there's a ton of people using the free version of softwares. Um, I personally don't do that because, as you guys know, I'm doing this uh, like online. I'm doing classes. I'm selling. I'm, I'm making a living out of using the softwares. So the right thing to do is to pay for the softwares. Now, it's, it's also a beneficial to pay for the softwares once, again, you're doing this as a business because you can actually write them off as uh, tax deductions, right? So they're, they're part of what uh, you need to, to spend on a monthly basis to do your job. So you can just like write them off. However... As a student, it's very common for that to happen. I'm not saying that's the right thing. I'm just saying it's very common. And as long as you're not abusing it and you're using it for learning, actually, most of the softwares nowadays, they have some sort of like learning license or something that you can use. Like 3D Code has one where you can download 3D Code, use it completely for free and uh, and just learn about it. And then you subscribe, right? So, yeah, um, that, that, that's pretty much what I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Thank you.
let's see. Um, Spirit Catcher is asking, I see other peoples do so much good. Hey, like Spirit Catcher, and I'm gonna tell this exactly to you. Give me one second. Where's the, where's the full screen? Okay, this message goes directly to you. If you see other artists doing great stuff, you cannot compare yourself to those guys. You don't know what they're going through, right? Like their life might be very chaotic. Maybe they don't have a, a very stable family or they have a very bad job. I mean, they, there could be horrible, horrible things happening on their lives that are not happening on yours. So it's very hurtful and it's very damaging to compare ourselves to others what you should do is compare yourself to yourself very common thing right just think about where you were last week where you were one month ago where you went 10 years ago and if you see the improvement that's all you need because we are each living our own life and we need to focus on our own path everyone has a different story everyone has a different trajectory and everyone's going to achieve different results so don't compare yourself to others compare yourself to yourself Later, I'm going to talk about a little trick that you can do to compare yourself to others, but it's going to be a little bit different to what you might be thinking of. And just two minutes to start. Two minutes to start right here, guys. Vinder, I'm 40 now and just got my first 3D artist job just a few months ago. There you go, Andres. There you go. Yeah. And, and this is a very interesting thing, guys. The... Um, I, I was uh, listening to Brandon Sanderson, um, a, a fantasy author that I discovered very recently, like six months ago, and, um, and he has a very nice like uh, podcast, or not podcast, like lessons, and there was one where he talks about uh, success, right? And he says that success is something that we that we have changed the value of, like in his case, right, being a writer. If he's a writer, he doesn't like if you're a writer you don't need to have a bestseller book on the new york times to be a quote unquote successful writer if you can make a living if you can provide for yourself and your family if you can enjoy what you're doing in um in this case interact or or influence people's life right that i would consider to be successful same thing with art like you don't need to be working at blizzard or at pixar or at disney or whatever to be a successful artist if you're doing cool stuff if people are enjoying the cool stuff that you do if you're making a living supporting yourself your family um living a good life and enjoying it that's a successful art that's successful artist how many i've mentioned this before how many writers uh, musicians actors are there out there that are not like the most famous actors and and uh, and um, writers or whatever and they're still making a very good life right israel all israel omar hayat on twitch what's up omar Tony, I'll get to your question very soon because we are about to start. And there we go. What's up, guys? Welcome to today's stream. Today is February 9, 2024, and we're going to be having some fun. I'm still not sure what we're going to be doing. Um, we have a couple of options, so we'll, we'll just like go from there. We can do a little bit of sculpting. We can do a little bit of um, on a modeling or something, or we could just talk about the industry and the 3D world in general, but we're going to be doing this. Okay, so um, before we jump into today's uh, workshop or today's uh, video, I just want to, um, well, of course, give a quick thank you here to Gward for the sub. Thanks, man, for the sub on the Twitch. And um, just to let you guys know, we are going to be having portfolio review next week, okay? So February 16th is going to be our portfolio review. You can go into our Discord channel and submit your portfolio. It's probably going to be a long session. Last time we couldn't finish on the time that we normally have for our streams. So I'm probably going to be starting the stream earlier next week so that we can like cover all of them. And I might not be able to go like super, super in depth with all of them, but we're going to try our best to, to get to everyone because there's a lot of submissions. Now, other than that, I just want to remind you guys, let me go here to the... There we go. And there we go. Thanks for the follow, Thinker. So I just want to remind you guys that we have 
um, courses available. I see a couple of questions going on the, um, what's the word, on the YouTube uh, chat about uh, ZBrush and stuff like that. Well, you can go into ableal3d.com. We're going to be sharing the link in just a second. And uh, we have available courses. We got our ZBrush course, we got our Blender course, Maya course, and our newest one, which is the Introduction to Marvelous Designer. So if you want to support the channel, other than being here, following and subscribing here on Twitch, of course, um, getting any of these courses really helps the projects keep going. So... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Sarn, welcome as well. Our good friend Sarn here on both chats helping us with the interactions. Um, Giward is asking, do you provide sculpting ZBrush mentorships? Yes, I do have mentorships available. That's a very common question that I get. We should do some sort of like a, like post on, on, on the Discord or, or website or something, I think. But yeah, we have, um, we have mentorships available. We have one hour sessions where we go over whatever questions you might have that I might be able to answer. And uh, I give you some homework. We keep talking through this course to make sure that you get um, like all of the information there. So if you want to know a little bit more about that word, please send me a message on this course and I'm, I'm going to be able to uh, send you all of the information so that you can decide when we can start. I don't have a lot of slots available though. I got usually about three or four slots per month. So if you want to like save your spot or, or separate your spot, make sure to, to reach out to me because otherwise I might not be able to accommodate everyone let's say tony says i have a question i'm somewhat new to seabrush and i've been sculpting basic things like wood barrels ladders but it seems to be taking me a long time i've been doing each piece separate any tips yes so actually i i, I created this sort of like chart a couple of years ago let me show you so if we have this chart right this is the time and this is the expertise and this is my strategy. This is a little technique that I'm going to give you guys. This is my strategy to learn any software. We already have a, a sort of like strategy to um, to pick any project. Now I'm going to do this and maybe I'll, I'll do like a clean version and share it with you as well. But in order to learn any software, we need to understand that there are three main sort of like uh, divisions, right? We got the amateur. We got the semi-pro. And we got the pro. These are like the levels that you're going to be like achieving in each of the softwares. ZBrush, Maya, Substance Painter, anything. Now, when you are an amateur, it's going to take you very short time to learn a lot of information. OK, because every single thing that you learn from a software is going to be new information that you can immediately apply. However, your quality, which is, again, the expertise is not going to be as good. Right. So initially, as an amateur, you're going to have a really huge spike right in learning. You're going to learn a lot of stuff very, very fast. And my best advice whenever you're in this situation or in this phase is numbers. OK, so in this case, the secret is quantity. The more exercises you make, the more things you try, the more tools you learn, the more you're going to learn about the software. Because if, if you have used ZBrush, you know that it's usually kind of like yourself fighting against the software to make sure that it does what you want to do. So at first, I recommend doing a lot of things, like a lot of quantity, a lot of practice. And you can see this in pretty much any discipline. So you practice a lot. You do a lot of different exercises, a lot of different um, little uh, projects. And that's going to give you a nice sort of like a learning growth. Once you hit the semi-pro stage, here's where things change a little bit because on the semi-pro stage you're gonna have this sort of like stair step growth like this okay and the reason is you're gonna learn something cool you're gonna utilize it but then you're gonna flat out like you're just gonna not learn anything and your stuff is gonna keep like pretty much on the same level you're not gonna see an improvement for a long time sometimes this could be months weeks uh, I've seen some people stuck in this or like plateaus for years even where where you see a work from like three years ago and then you see a new work and they're pretty much the same that's because they're not learning as much and in this one I recommend focusing on quality okay quality so you're gonna pick less projects let's say in this one you picked I don't know like in a month you're doing eight projects in this you're probably just going to do two projects per month because each project should teach you those specific things that are going to push you to the next level so that you can learn and improve as an artist after that and this is the most difficult one right here when you go into the pro level you need to find this okay and this right here is our motto always learning always improving right so you need to find this sort of like linear um, growth. It's very difficult. You're going to find a sort of like exponential growth at this point because you already have a lot of the information that you have, right? Like you, you've already learned a lot of stuff. So 
it's more about little things here and there that you're gonna be grabbing. I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Yesterday, I got a tutorial from an artist that I really like from the Nomon Workshop, and from like the eight hours of tutorials that the tutorial is long, I only needed 20 minutes. There was 20 minutes that I was a little bit like, uh, I was questioning about like the proper way to do it. And I just got the, the the tutorial. I saw those 20 minutes and with those 20 minutes, I know that I'm, my skill now has improved a little bit. And that skill is now gonna improve for all of my next projects, right? But now th those eight hours are no longer as useful. They might've been a lot more useful here because they would have like propelled me quite high. That's again, why I make the tutorials that I make that hopefully all of the courses that we have on the site will help you in this stage, initial stage and to some people in this stage as well. But once you get here, you're already working in a studio, you're already doing production work. So it's more about like the small increments that you're gonna be learning to become a better artist. Let's see. Ba -ba 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 Eduardo says, a teacher here in Brazil one time said, a small company won't pay for a Rafael Grassetti to do a simple job. Exactly, exactly. Like there's, um, I, and I always mention this with my um, my wife when I explain her like what I'm doing. It's like, there, there's such a big like, pie right like a cake the, the cake that we can split between all of the product producers and, and content creators in the world is really big so i don't want to have the whole cake that's just like way too greedy if you can have a slice of that cake that's cool and there's enough cake again for everyone so even though there's only one rafael grassetti there's a lot of jobs that require skills like the ones that rafael grassetti have and there's a lot of work jobs that require skills way lower than what rafael grassetti has so you don't need to be like the master all the time because there's going to be times where you're going to be doing some very very, very simple stuff, right? Cornelio says, I think it's easier to learn with feedback from a pro to go from semi-pro to pro. Yes, yes, yes. Um, like doing this as a self-taught artist is very difficult, like extremely difficult. I would say any any self-taught self artist can easily go from amateur to semi-pro. Like this section right here is very easily covered. And again, that's why we have our tutorials so that you can use them to, to get through this stage. But this stage, you're gonna need help. You need people who have gone through the things that you're going through to help you out and help you get to this like steps and, and keep growing. And in this stage, it's very funny because in this stage, you will still find mentors and you will still find people that are really good, but it's also a lot about your personal growth as an artist. I, I mentioned this frequently where when you're learning as an artist, you you kind of like learn from a lot of other things other than art, and that really helps influence the way you express yourself in your creations. Prijan is saying, is Modbox is still relevant? I would say no. I don't think I don't think Modbox is as relevant nowadays, to be honest. I know there are some production houses that still use this. Um, I had a teacher, his name is uh, Miguel Ortega, he's really, really good, and uh, he uses it quite a bit. I'm not sure if he still uses it, but he, when he was my teacher, he was a, a huge supporter of, of Modbox. Racer says, have you seen the new trailer for Blender BFX course by Jacob Circle? No, I have not. I'm not too much into, into BFX, to be honest. Uh, I've, I've mentioned that before. It's, um, it's not something that I enjoy as much. It's fun, but it's not something that I've researched too much and... and I don't use it too much. For game assets, is it better to start with Maya, then sculpt over it, then bake, or start with Seabirds, then retopo and Maya, and bake? It's up to you, Ward. Sometimes certain assets, I find them a little bit easier to do inside of Maya, and then like uh, sculpt in Seabirds. Sometimes I start in Seabirds, go to Maya, then go back to Seabirds. Um, at the end of the day, there remember guys, there's no like right or wrong way to do things. It's more about which effect or which method works best for you. I've seen some people that are using things like, I don't know, Rhino to do their hard surface modeling. If that works for you and the company that you're at can uh, like support it, <laughs> go for it. Gravita, hola, hola. Maria says, I'm doing an environment art course. At some points they use Modbox for the rocks, but I prefer to switch in zebras. Yeah, most of the stuff that you see online, like on courses and stuff, you can find alternatives. Like, um, I really like retopology inside of Maya, but I've done retopology inside of ZBrush. I've done retopology inside of, um, what's the word, inside of uh, Blender. I've used Topogon before. So there's a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of different options for you. Hablo español, claro que hablo español. Soy mexicano. Vivo en el norte de México, claro que hablo español. Y un poquito de, este, eh, ¿qué? Bueno, o inglés, obviamente. Entiendo el alemán. Al menos lo puedo procesar. 
Um, Ducking says, Abe, hey, I'm upgrading my knowledge mostly in the sub Seabrush and Maya. However, I would like to do environment as well, to mix characters with environment. And most people for that use Blender. Is it valid to make environment in Maya and Seabrush? Or it's completely valid. Again, as I was mentioning, there are multiple pipelines. And at the end of the day, especially modeling, is very universal. So you don't need to use any specific software for, for modeling. Modeling is, is very universal. If you like modeling in Maya, model in Maya. Like yesterday, I was working on a prop and um, I was using Maya. ZBrush and Maya, because I've been using Maya for longer. However, um, Blender has some really cool tools. So if you want to invest a little bit of time learning some of those tools for specific things like uh, like geometry nodes, those are very, very powerful. I think that's something that could definitely be uh, like utilized, especially for environment. Um, you can you can do that as well. Why Maya and not Blender in the industry? It's super difficult for me to learn Maya. I got a course if you want to learn Maya. It's an introduction to Maya. It's uh, like seven hours, eight hours, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things that the reason why Maya has been more prevalent is because Blender has only been like doing cool stuff for the past, I would say like six, seven years. It's been a really powerful software for a long time, but they started following more industry standard things very, very recently. So it's very important that, um, that that's why a lot of industries, again, Pixar, Disney, stuff like that. They use Maya also, also, um, Maya does have better animation and rigging tools than Blender. Like, no questions asked. So, if you want to do really complex, again, cartoony and uh, realistic deformations and things like that, Maya is better in that sense. <laughs> oh my god, Priyanju! <coughs> we, we've made that, uh, we, we've used that uh, Dread Shadow, thanks for the, for the sub, man. Um, we, we've talked about that before, man. A, a, a cylinder with uh, with the like circular details. The the only way to do that is to have a really like high poly cylinder. Let me show you. Let's just blender. I'm just gonna show it once, okay, Prudential. So pay attention. No, no, no. I'm not dying. Don't worry. Uh, I would really recommend you Ape's course for Maya. I was so afraid of Maya until I went through his courses. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, my courses. Every time I do a course, for the first chapter is always an introduction. Always, always, always. Because I don't know if the people or the students that are buying it are going to have like all of the necessary information that I need them to have. So I always like to start with a, with a, um, what's the word, with an introduction. And uh, by the way, let's do this. If we get, if we get to 50 viewers, I'm not sure how many viewers we have right now on Twitch, but if we get to 50 viewers on Twitch, I'm going to show you a sneak peek of chapter one of the new substance course, because I, I finished recording that one. So I think you guys are going to like it. So, okay, so if you have a cylinder, you need to make sure that the divisions on the cylinder are enough, okay? So I'm going to go here to divisions, and we're going to do a loop cut right there, and let's do a lot. So we're going to do until we get a sort of like square grid like this, okay, Priyanshu? And let's let's suppose that we want to do, again, like a, some sort of like silencer or something, right? Like a grated cheese sort of thing. Let's go face. So if we grab the faces, I know there was a shortcut, but I always forget which one it is. Is it control A or something? Yeah. But if we grab all of these guys right here, and we want to do a circular detail, we just need to do a little bit of an offset. So I'm just going to press I, inset them, and then we just delete them. And when we smooth this, okay, when we do a, a subdivision surface, that element, as you can see, is going to be round. Okay? But the reason why this is working, the reason why we're getting that round effect, and we can do more divisions, the reason why this is working is because we have a lot of divisions, and every division is acting like a support edge. If you try to do an eight-sided cylinder and do the same trick, it's not going to work. And it's not going to work because you don't have enough uh, resolution. And you're not going to be able to just like come here and add another edge loop, because if you do this, what's going to happen is you're going to have that horrible pinch right there. So that's, let's say, an unfortunate like uh, situation with, um, with this sort of like elements, with this sort of like cylindrical smooth elements that's the fact that you're going to need a lot of resolution people are scared of working with this amount of resolution and it shouldn't be it shouldn't be like um nowadays polygons are really not a bottleneck i've mentioned this before so you can definitely definitely um get uh, get there uh, x wave says hello ave i want to say thank you one of your videos on youtube helped me with my project i'm currently working on there you go yeah that that, that has been one of my goals to to create like a like a sort of library on the on youtube to uh, to be able to share with you guys all of the like common issues that people have this 
uh, with 3D. Um, I'm having problem learning Blender. I don't like it. It's not that bad. I used Maya. I started learning Maya in 2011. You guys want to see one of my early, early projects? Let me see if I have it over here. You guys want to go down memory lane and I show you some of my, <laughs> where I started as a 3D artist. Let's go, let's go down memory lane. So yeah, I started learning Maya in 2011. That's when I quit medicine school, as you guys know. I was there for a year and then I started learning Maya. Uh, Naive Otaku says, do you think the best way would be one to two years of self-thought as a foundation, then approach mentorship for one year? Would, would that be a good approach? Yeah, I mean, if you can get mentorship sooner or if you can go to a class, at least a simple class, right? Like a, like just an introduction class, that's always good. But um, but yeah, why medicine school? Oh, that's a really good question, man. Uh, it's a little bit of a personal question. I don't have any any issues sharing it. But and here's the thing. this is a, It might be an important lesson for a lot of you guys. For a long time, when I was growing up, I, I'm the oldest of my brothers, right? Uh, I have three more brothers, two brothers and one sister, so I'm the oldest. And I was very nerdy, always, like high grades, reading a lot. I was just like um, like acing my tests. I was always like the nerd geek guy. I didn't have a lot of friends and stuff like that, you know, typical stuff. However, I always felt this sort of like pressure to be the best, um, something that we've talked about uh, before. And this pressure kind of guided me to becoming a doctor because I saw being a doctor as like the pinnacle of success, right? So I was like, hey, if I'm a doctor and I make a lot of money and I help people, I'm going to fulfill what other people expect me to do, which is to be successful, to be great. And it was a lot of pressure. I I, I was doing like good in, in school, not great, but good on, on med school. I enjoyed it. I, I really liked the topics and everything, but it was not fulfilling my inner soul or my inner... Uh, you know, passion, right? And and I always wanted to do video games. That that was like my my thing. So I remember I was going through like a crisis back then in in med school. I was very I'm not gonna say depressed because I don't think it was depression, but I was just like not myself for a, a couple of months. My parents saw that and they were like, "Hey, just go and talk to someone, go to therapy." And uh, I went to a psychologist and a couple of sessions, and we figured out that it's like, "Hey, you are you are doing something." to fulfill someone else's expectations that they didn't even tell you to do. Like my parents never never told me like, you have to be a doctor or anything, but I kind of like unconsciously felt that sort of like pressure. And when I like took that pressure out and I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do what I want to do, which this is very important. When, when the psychologist asked me, what do you wanna do? I didn't say video games. And, and that has been, I don't think I've even shared this with, with, with Sarn. This has been one of those things that has kind of like molded my approach to all of the things that I do. Because what I said right there was like my true calling, if you wanna if you wanna call it like that. It was I, I said, I wanna tell stories. That was my my freaking goal. Like I want to tell stories. I want to be able to create characters or stories or something and and share that with people. I, I enjoy that. I feel passionate about doing that. So later on, I found that 3D was my um, my road to to doing this, right? Like this is what I'm I'm doing to to share those stories, and that's why whenever I create characters like the Plague Doctor, like the Oni character, like the uh, like the little pirate island, like the axe, it's all stories. I, I always try to imagine where those things would fit within a story, and that's the kind of stuff that that has like pushed me to to keep creating and, and keep doing this, which is. Uh, 3d which is what i love so so yeah that that was i would say a, a huge shift in my in my like mental or sort of like a professional way of approaching things i realized that i needed to do something that i felt passionate about but i also needed to find tools that would allow me to do that so i'm i was just not gonna like drop and be a, a an artist uh living on the streets or something just telling stories right so it was always a way to to find how to fulfill that goal of telling stories. 
So yeah, that's a that's a long, uh, long, long sort of like a personal uh, reflection that I had uh, back in 2011, and and one thing led to another, and I landed in a place in in a city close to where I live that were having an intensive course about um, about 3D, and I'm gonna show you a couple of the things that I did there. But let me let me answer some questions first. On February 2nd, I started your Super course, and I must tell you, you are an incredible teacher and artist. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> that's beautiful. Thanks, man. I mean, and, and that's what I was mentioning earlier on the on the live stream, right? Like we all have our own path. You, you who are watching this, I don't know where, you are gonna have your own challenges. You are gonna have your own uh, like uh, valleys, right? Like very dark places, very dark moments. But you're also gonna have really great and amazing achievements and goals. And and it's no use comparing yourself to others because you are the only one who's going through that specific path. So just feel happy with that. Keep pushing. Keep grinding. Keep learning. Keep improving. And you're gonna get there. Let's say, um, Andy says, I have a question. It's alright to have a weaker SSS map. I kind of feel like a normal SSS map destroys the details. Yes, yes, you can definitely tone it down. And actually, that's why you usually have a multiplier value on the on the subsurface map, so that you can tone it down so that you don't have as much. Because yes, the subsurface map will not kill, but it will it will reduce or soften the normal map information. What some people do as well to Andy to to like bring that detail back is they will have an SSS map, they will have a normal map, and they will have an extra bump map to just like push the things a little bit more and generate a, a little bit more detail. How can we adjust brushes to create panel lines in ZBrush? Demi standard just doesn't cut it, uh, you know. Um, for panel lines, I would recommend using the chisel brush, this one right here. So the chisel brush is way, way nicer, and you click, you click, and then, how was it? Oh, not drag right. You click and then you press control. And as you can see, this has like a, like a little bit of, of uh, lazy mouse. So you can just do this. Right now, I don't have enough resolution, but if you can imagine with enough resolution that this could give you a nicer line. You can also press uh, control or no, what is it? shift? You can press shift. And when you drop shift, you're going to just draw a line. So you draw one line, you click, you press shift. You draw a line, and when you drop shift, you get the line uh, created. Do you think the... Oh, I said this because I was learning on my own, but now I decided to take an online course of 12 months for character art, but quite confused. Yeah, that, that's fine, man. Like, those kind of courses are really, really good. I'm actually thinking about... We, we've been discussing this, about having our own sort of, like, uh, workshop. Uh, it's probably going to be, like, a two- or three-month portfolio workshop. We haven't really, like, nailed down the details or the prices of what we want to do, but it's, it's, it's coming, it's coming uh, soon. Lemon says, steps. I'm a perfectionist and that trades a lot of time and somehow that quality in me is starting to bug me. Any tips? Uh, what quality? Uh, oh, the quality of being a perfectionist. Yes. So, again, you need to understand that there's always a, a diminishing return in quality. And, and I like how they talk about this on, um, on like, the denoiser here. So everyone has used denoisers, right? It's this like thing that you can use to, to remove the noise on an image. And the thing is, um, the reason why denoisers were invented, or one of the reasons, was because they realized that you could really increase the samples of your element. And the more samples you increase, there was a, a sort of like diminishing return of the quality that you got. So there comes a point where it's like, this is good enough. This is fine. Let's just do something else, like a little bit of post-processing, and you're good to go. And that's the same thing that uh, I would recommend for you. Like, don't, don't, like, you need to understand that there was a famous quote, I think it was Da Vinci or, or Michelangelo, Michelangelo, that says that art is never finished, just abandon. I use that quote all the time. You need to abandon your art sometimes. Be like, hey... Like, like even, and I've mentioned this, like all of these things that I've done, all of the courses, they have things that I could fix and I could keep on like pushing and, and polishing. But I'm just like, it's good enough. Like this is in a really good position. I know I can make it better, but I need to stop because otherwise I'm not going to be able to tell other stories or other things that I want to tell. Is it possible to get a job in a AAA game company without any prior experience? I mean, as a fresher, it is, but it's very difficult. Like very, very difficult. You would need to be like a, like a prodigy in school and, and create an amazing portfolio. Clean the house says, hey Abe, after finishing your only course, which by the way, I loved and got so much love as well. I wanted to make some Dark Souls themed night, but I realized that I never sculpted armor, let alone a knight. Any help? 
I actually am gonna be doing a, a video soon about that uh, for YouTube uh, clean the house. You start very similar to how we did the bracers, like you you mask things out and you extract and you clean stuff up, but then you you do a couple of extra things, usually retopology in Maya, to um, to get to a nicer result. So I'll talk about that soon on the YouTube channel because I'm I'm actually working on something that uses that sort of stuff. Roma says, the size of the model affects the density of UV. Does it somehow affect the work in the substance? I'm trying to figure out Udemy's workflow. Um, some textures you might need to tile more, Roma, because some textures are calibrated to specific sizes, like half meter or one meter. And if your object is like 10 meters, you're going to have to tile that 10 times so that it matches the proper density. But that's pretty much it. Like you might just need to, um, to do that. Sir, why sculpting is better than modeling and also sculpting also provides your work as many policies we want. Uh, the reason why sculpting is better than modeling in some cases, not every every time for Yansho, is because it gives you more flexibility. And flexibility is king. So Lonely Mango says, how many years did it take you to start earning using 3D? That's the funny part. Let me show you. Let me show you, okay? Because this is a this is a funny story. So back in 2011, I started learning about um about 3D. And I went to this school called Ethos. It's no longer a school. There's still a studio, but they don't they no longer teach. And where is it? And what happened there? Oh yeah, there we go, Renders. Is they taught us about 3D, right? Modeling, extrudes, bevels, things like that. And back in the day, you didn't need to know a lot about 3D to, to be considered like proficient. Look at this. This was my first environment. It's horrible. <laughs> it's completely horrible. It had Angons anywhere. I was trying to do like an Assassin's Creed sort of like theme. Look at the texel density. Look at the like super low poly meshes. Like it was just like really, really, really bad. Hey, right, there you go. Clean the house. Thanks for the bits, man. Thanks for the bits. So I learned this. Here, let me show you a couple of more pictures. This is a famous character that I have. Does anyone know his name? If you guys know me in real life and you have played D&D with me, you know who this guy is. Or who this guy is supposed to be. His name is Old John. And he's a, a character of mine from D&D. From &D. And uh, he's supposed to be like a cat, right? Like a magic cat, similar to like Final Fantasy stuff. But this was my, my skill level at that time, 2011. I'm talking, what, 13 years ago. And um, I remember doing my first dragon. I've never done a dragon since then. I should do a dragon soon. But this was my first dragon back then. It was just like really, really bad stuff. This was my first like Photoshop, uh, like matte painting, I was calling it. It was just horrible. But again, back in the day, if you knew how to do this, and if you knew how to do this, like which is basic texturing, um, you could get a job. And I got a job three months after I finished this course. So the course was three months, and immediately after I finished, I got a job at a, at a small like, uh, like a company. So Well, no, it was not a small company. It was like 100 people. So um, let me show you, because I want to show you one of the first like seabrush sculpts. <laughs> Let's see, which one should I show you? This one, the biking. Well, this is one of the cool things about Seabrush is that all of the tools are still like uh, usable. This tool I made, look at that. June 30, 2011. It was this guy right here. This was my first, I would consider this to be my first full character. And it probably looks very similar to some of your guys' first characters, right? So, look at horrible, look at the hands, look at the feet, oh my god. So, but yeah, this was me learning the tools back in the day, this was me, like, understanding how, how Seabrush worked. And now, like, my latest, like, finished character is, of course, Tyros. Some of you might have seen that, um, that character in, the, um, this one right here. But this is, we're talking about, again, this I did um, last year. Was it last year or was it this year? Last year, yeah, it was last year. Oh, shit. It was like like February of last year I finished the texturing for this guy. This was one year ago, so that's 12 years from this biking right here. So it's 12 years of progress and so many things learned, so many experiences, so many projects, so many, like, <laughs> things, right? Um, and, and even on this one, I still see errors. Like, I still see things that I could definitely fix. Like, the hands, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the hands. Um, but that's how you improve as an artist. Just, like, hard work and time.
Sculpt is not better to modeling. It's two different things. That's right here. They're two different processes, but they can achieve similar results. What's the best resource to find a job in 3D in the US? I noticed that LinkedIn or Indeed doesn't really have a lot of vacancies. ArtStation is really good, man. Like ArtStation, I've seen at least a lot of listings here in the job section. I'm not sure if all of them are uh, updated, but I've seen a lot of uh, like options here. So I would recommend like doing a little bit of uh, research here. And in your case, man, if you're in the US and you're near one of the main hubs like New York, LA, Seattle, try to go to the conventions. I know there's a CG... CGC? CGC? Yeah, I think CGC. No, not CGC. CGC is a grading company for carts. Oh my god, I forgot about the name of that one. But there's like BD game cons and stuff like that that you can go and, and look for for connections, network. How long should one take when setting up portfolio renders? Light setting cameras? I feel like I took too much time. Uh, it usually takes me like one or two days to get them done, Andy. So it's, it's definitely, like it definitely takes some time. Third thing she got built in the new how to install the software. Yeah. Can a 3D artist become a millionaire? As a 3D artist, I don't think so. And, and and that's an unfortunate uh, <laughs> question and, and situation. But here's the thing, man. If you're in this career to be a millionaire, to make money, you're in the wrong career. Unless you have a lot of money to invest on your own video games and sell and publish your own video games or your own films and things like that, the return of, return of investment that you're going to be making is not going to be the same as other like things like, I don't know, realtors or or people that sell like luxury cars or things like that. So if you're, if you're doing this for the money, man, I would say... Um, you're a little bit uh, on the wrong path. So it's uh, I'm not saying that you cannot make good money. You can definitely make good money. And there's projects that are very like um, they, they return a very nice profit. But um, but you need to you need to keep that in mind. Mr. Shadow. Hey, Raham, do you think mentorships are worth it? If I want to take the next step from free recorded? Yes, of course, man. Like you can ask. Uh, I've had a couple of mentorships on the on the Discord. You can ask there, and and they'll tell you that you, sometimes you learn way more from just like 20, 40, 30 minutes of uh, of like one on one content, so that people can see like how good you are and uh, and help you on the specifics. Because I think that's one of the things about tutorials. Tutorials are very good, and I I always try to do that. Like I always answer questions on Discord and on the platforms. But sometimes you can do something on the tutorial and you don't know if you did it right. So that's where mentorships are really, really useful. GDC, that's right. There you go. Jaxi, thanks for the for the for the element. I'm a little bit behind on the chats. Sorry for that. <laughs> um listening to you while doing breadsticks at work, learning a lot with the Cyber scores, man. Cheers. There you go, Pataboy, thank you. When I when do I focus towards anatomy and to making realistic characters? I'm confused. Um well I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean, Lemon Soup. Can you elaborate? Aki, hello. I have the video at X1.25. No, I don't. Maybe you do, but I don't. I just talk very fast. Josue. <laughs> I don't think I have the video at 125. Do you give mentorships for environments? Yes, I give mentorships for anything that I can, like, like or things that I know about. So if it's regarding modeling, sculpting, rendering, a little bit of rigging, um, texturing, 3D printing. What else? Some like design things as well. Like I, I can help you out. And yeah, I, I think my prices are a little bit more affordable, to be honest. And that's because I live in Mexico. So the cost of living is not as high. But yeah. What were you sculpting? I was sculpting a, an alien. Uh, it was just a, a quick thing. We're going to do like a head or something in just a second. But yeah, I'm showing old projects. So this is an old project right here. And then... And then I went to Noman a couple of years later. You know, I want to show you some of my early Noman stuff as well. Where is it? Noman. There you go. So, for instance, in Art History, uh, which was one of our first classes, in Art History 1... Um, we were tasked with doing a character. And I did the... Was that the character? I think it was that character. I did like three things. There we go. So it was this was another warrior. So this was like two or three years after this one right here. And you can already start seeing the, the improvement. Anna Malobichko. Thank you and welcome to the to the stream. So this was again a couple of um, 
of years after that one and you can start seeing the improvement but there was only seabrush and polypaint again very basics or like the sign and the tattoos just like horrible fiber mesh there was a lot of form missing on the head uh hands were very and i think i used a base mesh for this one so i didn't do it from scratch and even though it was it was not great so this was one of uh one of the cool things right there and then i kept pushing and i went all the way to demo reel which demo reel was the place where you start preparing for a portfolio. So one of the one of my best projects when I was uh, there was this one. Uh, there we go. So the giant. So this was one of the big portfolio pieces. And this portfolio piece was one of the ones that allowed me to get my first job out of the industry or out of the school. This ice giant that I did. This was done with um, with V-Ray. It was done with um, Udems. It had a lot of Udems. Uh, displacement map. People always say that they really like how the glass or ice looks on the shoulder. It was one of my, my favorite projects back in the day. And to me, this was a huge sort of like... Um, how, what, how, how to say it? it? It was a huge milestone, right? When I, when I was able to deliver this quality right here. Because I... I've always liked the the World of Warcraft cinematics, right? Like they were always very inspiring to me. So this is the sort of like thing that I I created that allowed me to say, hey, I know what I'm doing, right? Like this to me was like the proof that I knew the pipeline, that I knew the the whole process. <laughs> Looks like budget Kratos. This was before the the Kratos uh, like the God of War remake. This was in 2015, I think. Mr. Shadow with the Prime, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, that cinematic man, the word of the uh, Wrath of the Lich King, I think that was one of the things that like pushed me towards like again creating stories and doing that. How much time do we have to spend in a day to build a portfolio? It's not a time in a day, man. It's it's how much time are you gonna spend on a piece? Usually for por portfolio pieces, I recommend at least three weeks, at least. Like that's the the least amount of time that you should you should spend on a piece. And it's usually one week for sculpting, one week for modeling and UVs, and one week for texturing and rendering. That's like how I whenever I'm doing mentorships, that's how I um how I do it. Oh, we got a hype train going. There you go. I never know what these high print things are, but um, but yeah, if you are following or if you're not following, make sure to follow. So Turak, oh Turak, another uh, sub there with Prime. Thanks, man. Thank you for the sub. So yeah, this was again my my first uh, like big character, big like uh, success. But now I'm gonna show you a project that I failed. This is a project that I could not do. And to this day, it's one of those projects that I'm, I'm like, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do it right when I have the chance. So back in, in, in Demo Reel, you usually did three projects per per term. So it was very humbling this, because look look at this. So I did the I did the Ice Giant, right? Like that was the first uh, render or the first project. And then I find I found this very cool uh, concept from Eitan Sana, which was an environment. And uh, back in the day, one of the advices was try to do a little bit of everything so that people can see that you're flexible and you can work on multiple things. So I did this, which is a, uh, what's the word? It's a, a like an environment piece. It's a relatively simple environment piece, uh, but it did require a little bit of planning and just performance things for the for the renders. And the the thing that I like about this one is that I I think I nailed the the concept quite quite a bit. Let me see if I can find the original concept. There we go. There you go. Thanks you. Thank you, Jaxi, for the sub, man. So this was the original concept. Again, this is by Eitan Sana, very famous concept artist. And um, and I did my my rendition of this thing. Oh. I, I think I used B-Ray or something. And I was really happy because this was at Noman. So if you were walking at Noman, they had a print of this thing um, on display. A couple of my pieces were at Noman. I'm not sure if they're still there because no one is now changing places, but they were there. So this was the um, my second project, and I was happy with it. So I had so first project, Ice Giant, nailed it. Second project, Environment, Mars Environment, nailed it. And then uh, my teacher is like, "Okay, let's go to the third project. What you're gonna do?" And I was like, "I want to do a female character." And he was like, "Okay." And I found uh, this freaking piece. This girl right here is supposed to be Joan of Arc. Look at how beautiful this looks. This was before AI, by the way. So we know all of this was like done by a real artist. This was done by uh, Miguel Coimbra. 
and I saw it and I was like, wow, I love the light, I love the, the scene, the battlefield, the, like, the emotion, the story, everything looks so, so, so cool. And I failed. I tried, like, really hard on doing this piece, and I couldn't do it. And even my teacher was like, oh, Abe, you failed. You, you did not manage, like, I passed the class, right, because I had the other two previous works, but he was like, this is not a good portfolio piece. You need to you need to improve because this is not uh, <laughs> this is not working. Let me see if I can find the renders. Uh, Where are the renders? Renderman. Oh, because this was in Renderman. Yeah. I'm not sure why I was doing this in Renderman either. Where are the renders? I'm sure I had some renders of her. If not, I'm just going to open the, the Seabird file. But I was pretty sure they had the renders here. Huh, it seems like I didn't. Maybe this is an old version. Mm, well, let me show you the, the sculpt. Because even the sculpt is not that great. And you're going to see in just a second. There we go. So, yeah, the face looks really bad, really horrible. Like, very broad, like, forehead. Like, the depth is wrong. The lips are horrible. Well, there's multiple heads right there. There we go. That was a little bit better, but yeah. It was a complete mess. I, I did, like, finish all the stuff, like, the modeling and things like that. But I, I didn't know all of the pipeline at this time. And, um... And one of the things that I, I like, uh, regret the most was that at the time, I didn't know how to do hair. So I was trying to sculpt the hair, and sculpted hair just does not look good, right? So, yeah, that was the that was the unfortunate result of this project right here. But this also taught me a lesson, and, and it was a very important lesson that hopefully you guys can, can learn today um, as well, which is, it's fine to fail, right? Like, failing teaches you more than succeeding, because even though I did learn from the Ice Giant, and I learned from the, from the Mars Station, I learned more from this one that I failed because I, I saw the things that I was like that I needed. Uh, let me see if I have the it's on a different uh, it's on a different drive. Let me change drives. Give me one second. So yeah, this was a uh, it really hurt. And, and the thing about this project is that this project was on the last uh, quarter of um, of the year. So it was like November or October, November. September, October, November, and December of 2015. So it was before Christmas. So right before Christmas, I failed at this project. So all of that uh, freaking like uh, winter's break, I was like, oh damn, I, I suck at this. So, and then we came back to term or to portfolio two. And the next portfolio, the next portfolios, I think we're good. Let me show you. You, you guys will, will decide. Let me just wait for this thing to load. Do you usually make hard surface like armor, etc. in Seabrush? I always find similar to a hard to work with tablet. So yeah, I, I make the the base like blocking of the armor in Seabrush and then I bring it into Maya and I do every topology in Maya and then I bring it back into Seabrush to add the details. So it's a little bit of uh, of back and forth, but I find that uh, that works quite nicely. Where is it? For some reason, my my product is not showing. And I'm not sure if I have that on my on my portfolio. Maybe I do. I don't think I updated that. No, I don't. That's weird. I should have had those on my portfolio. So I did three projects for the second part. Again, I failed one. Like um, there was a cowboy scene. Let me try a different slot. This is a very old drive, so maybe that's why it's having a little bit of an issue. I want to be a character artist. I want to tell stories through them. For the next three months, I'm giving all my time focusing here, but I'm confused where to start from small props and move to anatomy. Well, if you if you haven't used a seabrush lemon soup, seabrush is one of the things that you need to, to try out. Um, that's going to give you a really nice idea of, of the, the th type of stuff that you need to create for, for characters. What the hell? This is not working. 
It's really weird. See if that works. There you go. Now I heard the the little click. There we go. Okay. So over here, charms, charm eleven, demo reel. There we go. So that was project one, two, and three. And then project four was a fail. It was this one. <laughs> it was this um, cowboy. And I also really like this. Um, what's the word? This concept, it was like very moody. I, w I wanted to try like a, like an interesting light setup. It was relatively easy. It was a shotgun and the character. But at this point, I didn't know Marvel designer, so I, I was trying to sculpt the clots, and that was also a fail. This was my result. Horrible, horrible result. Look at that hair, freaking horrible hair. So I remember doing this and my teacher was like, Abe, this is not looking good, man. Like, I would not recommend you use this for your portfolio. Like, look at that. Some clay strips there on the, on the element. Like, well, it was just not good. Look at that. Horrible, horrible. So he was like, I don't recommend you use this for your portfolio. I was like, yeah, you're right. So we did Project 5. And again, and, and, and remember, guys, Project 3 was the was the Joan of Arc. So I was feeling like bad because I was not executing things properly. And then I did this uh, cowboy and it sucked as well. I was like, damn, like, what am I doing wrong? And he was like, my teacher was like, let's try something else. Don't do anatomy. Do something a little bit more modeling, stuff like that. So that you can get again, um, so that you can get back into your into your mindset. And, and then and then we'll continue. And I found this one right here. Um. I call this Echo 13. I don't think if it was the name or not. It was a robot. It was a robot concept. This robot concept right here. Oh, there we go. So it was this concept right here. And I tried to match it as close as possible. There, again, things that I didn't match perfectly. But I think the final result looks good, which is this one right here. So this was a fun one. And the reason why this was a fun one was because at the time, that was when Substance Painter was starting to, like, be noticed in the industry and i told my teacher then it's like i'm gonna do this in substance painter and he was like but substance does not allow udems you're not gonna be able to get a good amount of resolution it's like i know but i think i can find a way to to make it work and he was like okay i mean you just failed to the two last projects so if you want to do it go for it but I, I don't have a lot of faith on you <laughs> and i was like yeah i know but i think i can make it work and i did like i, I really like this result right here i, I really like this character i think it looks uh, cool um, I was making the same mistake that I tell you guys not to make, which is the, the metal edgeware, right? Like, uh, I'm applying metal edgeware every fucking wear, so you don't want to do that. But it was important for me to get my confidence back, and that's another, that's another cool tip that I want to give you guys. If you're feeling that you are failing or you're not improving as much, sometimes it's perfectly fine to go back to a comfortable piece or a comfortable process that you know about just to get that sort of like spark back. Just like feel like you're doing things right. And after you do that, then you challenge yourself again with another more challenging thing. Um, Javier says, in my opinion, this is showing what I think that's a big part of the advantage of a school mentorship, setting better self-thought. A lot of times you need someone that is honest to you about things looking good, bad, and why, without being mean, of course, just being completely honest. Yeah, that's right, Javier. And I mean, I do that on the Discord channel. I try to give you guys as much feedback as I can, but it's not the same as, as a one-on-one -on -one where I can tell you, yeah, man, this sucks, and, uh, and you need to fix this, and here's how you fix it. That's, I think that's the most important secret about a mentorship. If you're doing a mentorship, you need to understand that the person that's hopefully helping you has gone through the similar things. Things. So he will know what things you're like messing up and he's going to tell you how to fix those things. So yeah, this definitely gives a little bit of a mass effect vibe. And then what I liked about that is I did a, a sort of like a render with uh, again a little bit of story that was that was a huge sort of um thing that they pushed a lot of to us in, in nomans like always tell a story and this was the the final render that i used so it was like this exploration theme and the thing is all of them are in the same pose it's the exact same pose i think i just like rotated the head slightly or something but it's all the same pose um and it looks like they're again like kind of like exploring a, a galaxy i made a mistake here can anyone tell me what the mistake is it has to do with the galaxy at the back can anyone tell me what the mistake here is? It's a very technical mistake, but it's uh, it's one of those things that, again, with more time and more experience, you learn about. <laughs> I 
how some artists achieve really really high quality in the texture with small uvs is a question that we're getting from none and the answer is um they just optimize everything they use stylable textures or they mirror uvs like there are ways to do some tricks no it's not the perspective no it's not the height fall off no it's not the depth the answer is when you're taking a picture right like this picture is wrong this picture is right if you're exposing to see the moon you will not see the stars if you're exposing to see the stars the moon will be completely blown out of proportion because in order for us to see the stars we need to keep the lens or the sensor open so that we can get that exposure right so in this one you should not see the galaxy like the galaxy, like the background should be completely black, completely, completely black because of the exposure. That's right, Jax, the exposure. So um, it looks cool, right? It looks cool, but it's not real. So you you need to, those are the kind of things that most people, let's say like 90% of the population will not see. And they'll be like, oh, cool picture. But then the astronomers or the uh, like uh, astrophysicists will be like, this is wrong. Like you should not be able to see the, the galaxy with a naked eye because um, the characters are exposed with, some sort of like moon or sun right so it's uh it, but in those little like differences really really make a, a change and you can see this for instance in uh, in interstellar if you see the shots that they do with interstellar there's never stars in there it's like this completely void like if you, if you see these shots right here you're not gonna see stars it's just a ship because in this case um who did this was it nolan was it interstellar I always forget, um, but the director knew about this, so so he was uh, he he knew about the exposure of lights in that case. Yeah, exactly, Jax, exactly. Nolan, yeah, that was Nolan. Yeah, so that was exposure. So I did project five. This was my my fifth project for Demoreal, and again, it was a success. It was a a really good accomplishment, modeling wise. Um, if you guys, I can show you the the wireframe of these characters. I'm actually quite proud of that. You guys want to see the wireframe? Let's open it up. So it's probably gonna, I'm not sure if it's gonna crash because this was done with V-Ray and V-Ray, I no longer have V-Ray. But um, yeah, this was a, a very cool project back in the day because again, it gave me confidence back to to push for, for the next project. That was made on a, on a student version. There we go. Now again, there were there are things here that I would definitely change if I had the the chance. So for instance, um, I think the floor was done with uh, like pure pure resolution, as you can see, or pure uh, like geometry. I did not do displacement or anything. I would definitely do displacement. Actually, this is one of those projects that I could definitely fix relatively easy, and um, and just like update on my portfolio. I probably will do that. Okay, uh, where is the Robot one. Robot group. Uh, robot A. There we go. Okay. So this is the character. And that's the topology. So all quads, um, like proper flow. This could perfectly be rigged. It has uh, two parts, so it's the, the suit or the body right here. Okay, and then all of the armor as a, as a separate piece, so you can detach things and uh, and move things around. Uh, it's supposed to be for subdivision surface, of course, so I can just grab everything and press number three and smooth it out. It's a little bit heavy, as you can see. Like, right now, it's at 75,000 polygons, but again, for, for, like, film, this was not made for games. Now it can be used for a game. Like, this is now a resolution that you could easily have in a game, but back in the day, this was not for games. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I was really, really happy with the, with the result of this one. And a lot of the things that I learned on the armor from the Joan of Arc one were used for this one right here. Schneidai, out of context question. May I know the specs of your PC? I'm currently running 3D softwares on integrated GPU. Oh, no, yeah, you definitely need a, 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 a GPU, like a normal GPU. I currently have a 3080 Ti. I have 32 gigs of, uh, gigabytes of RAM. I have a Ryzen 7 third generation. No, fifth generation. No, it's Ryzen 7 5800X. 
and that's pretty much it i got my my huion tablet for for drawing two monitors plus the huion tablet we got the racer black widow um a mini keyboard and a logitech g6 g600 for my mice or mouse so yeah this was a, a fun project right here there's a couple of uh, like topology issues here's a here's an important one guys on the knee that's not the right way to do topology for the knee or for the heel right there the right way is always to have a loop that goes across like this why so that we can bend it okay i know i have that sort of like split there but that's not a good split because when i if i were to like flex this like uh forward or backwards we would get some weird distortion yeah i have a the, the it's a very similar one the g600 also has the the 12 buttons on the side so it's like an mmo mouse but it's, it's uh it's cheaper than the it's cheaper than the than the racer i i had a racer but then it uh, broke down and i bought a second one and it broke down very fast the second one that i bought so i was not i was like nah i don't want to i don't want to do racer anymore what character is that? This is a character, I'm talking about uh, some of my old portfolio pieces, Aroma. A little bit of my, my journey as a 3D artist. And uh, this was a character I did um, for my portfolio piece several years ago. It's uh, like an alien robot. Doesn't have a face. It's uh, completely faceless because the mask, of course, covers it. And um, yeah, this was the, the render. So I'll probably show you guys that. I, I let, me, let me note that down because I always forget about the, the things. Let's do how to make or how to improve an old project because i don't have this project on my portfolio on my art station and i think you guys are the judges but should this one be on my portfolio i think so but it can definitely be improved and then to prove myself again that was project five what was project six? Oh, this was another failed one <laughs> this was another failed one um i was doing a a hall let me see if i have I, I, I wanted to do like an environment i just did this for like two days and i was like nah it's not gonna work and it was supposed to be like a like a like a big hallway i did like the columns and i was doing like the architecture but I was just not feeling it. It was like, it's gonna, it, it was supposed to be my last project, right? It was like, it's supposed to be my last project. It should be, um, yeah, I should definitely fix the metal edge way, right? So it should be, this one took three weeks, Roma. Uh, I had all of this projects that I'm showing you guys, it was three weeks per project. So it was one week of sculpting, one week of modeling, one week of texturing and rendering. That was usually the way that they were handled. So um, this was the fifth project. And then for the sixth one, I was trying to do this environment. It didn't work out. And it was going to be my last project at Nomen, the last one. I was like, I got to do something that really like resonates with me. Again, going back to, to not letting yourself be influenced by something else and stuff like that. And I did a character of a, a portrait of a character that I had before. So this is my own original like character. And this is the final result. This one right here. So my idea with this project was to make a character that look as close as I could make it to a cinematic character. So that was my, my selling point. It's like, I'm gonna show that I know how to do cinematic level quality stuff. And it still has like some like things that I would fix, like it has no eyebrows, for instance, um, uh, no eyelashes either. The, the hair that we have right here, it was before X-Gen. So this was, I don't know, I think it was called shaving a haircut or something like that. And it looks like grass, so it looks very, very bad. Um, I did like the, the flag, but one of the things that I liked about this one, I don't have the file, or I, I can't show you the file right here, but this one has all the render passes. So I did all of the render passes for the character, and um, and I like made the comp in um, in Nook to, to like combine all of the elements together. Do I know if there's a similar tool like Quadro for, for Blender? Yes, there is a new one, or there's a plugin, um, a Greensway, that's called uh, Retopoflow. I, I use that one. I, I use that one on, on Blender. Let me see if I have the passes right here. So yeah, this was the this was the end result. I recycled a lot of stuff. So this armor right here was recycled from an old project. I actually have used this armor several times now. You have probably seen this. Uh, I used it on a, on a render recently. Um, and uh, and yeah, I did the I did the comp. I'm not sure if I have the comp right here. And there was an animation. 
So on my old portfolio reel, there's an animation of like the camera going in, the flag is waving on the background, and the, this character is just like not moving or anything. But uh, but yeah, it was fun. And to me, again, being able to deliver this as my final sort of uh, as my final sort of like project, this one right here. It felt like everything, guys. Like I I'm just like going back into the moment and and I remember when I finished this like piece, this render and then like the close up and everything. It was like telling my old self, like the little guy that was very scared in 2011, uh, dropping out of math school and not knowing if he was going to be able to make it uh, as a 3D artist. And then seeing this as like, you did it, man. Like you just graduated school. You just finish the first part of your journey. That's when the next journey started, which was uh, this like professional journey. But it was it was a, a very fulfilling moment, like knowing that all of that hard work because remember, this is 2016, right? It's March 2016. It's at the end of my of my uh, Noman career. And I started the journey in 2011. So it was five years, like literally five years, roughly to the day of all of this uh, sort of like uh, progress, right? So it was just good. And, and that's the thing that sometimes I, I, I struggle to, to share with you guys. It takes time. It, it's not from one day to the next. I know there are some people that can get to this result in like one year or two years and i'm super happy for them and that's amazing to me it took me five years to get from from this old biking look at this it took me five years to get from this biking all the way to this result right here was it worth it totally it was totally worth it was it difficult yes hell yeah it was very very complicated but it was a a very fun experience and a very like uh, fulfilling process to be able to grow as an artist and get to this result right here. Ducking says, I'm currently following Complete Guide for ZBrush, followed by Advanced ZBrush Character Creation and Texture Character Creation. So I wonder, since your newest Marvel's course is out and I have never used it, is it better for me to first go through that course before sculpting clots? No, not really. Um, the courses that you're talking about, those are from Next Dude, uh, uh, as I've mentioned before. I'm no longer with them. So if you have questions about those, uh, Ducking, send them to me on Discord because I can't see the ones that you ask on Udemy because I don't have access to those courses. They own those courses. So, yeah. With a better render, it should be... Uh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, that was my 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 road, guys. Like, that was my my progress from... From absolutely newbie guy learning about ZBrush. And five, year later, five years later graduating, doing this kind of, like, pieces right here. It took time. It took a lot of effort. Of course, it was a huge money investment as well. But this was, again, back in 2016. And from then... Eight years have passed already. Eight freaking years. And I've done so much other stuff. But we're going to talk about that stage of my career in a, in another moment. I want to... Let, let's jump back into... Um, let's jump back into into Seabrush and do some sculpting. I, I kind of want to do some... Some sculpting here. How is my English so good? Well, that that's, um, that's a good question. Um, ever since I was little... So like since primary school, I've always been here in Mexico. They they there are a lot of schools that teach you like English. So half of the day is English, and then the half of the other day is Spanish. And uh, I was just like always in in a school that had English classes. And then on on secondary school, well here we call it secondary, but it's like uh, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. I went to another a different school that all of the classes were in English. So that really helped. And I always like to read, as I've mentioned before. So, it, it's part of the thing. Yeah, the first project, guys, they're always so fun. And I, I keep them. Uh, some people say, like, no, you should delete your, your old projects. You don't want anyone to, to see them or notice them. It's like, no, keep them. Be proud of your journey. Be proud of, of where you were and where you are right now. Mr. J, what's up, man? Yeah, we have an amazing chat. I, I think uh, I've been talking, like, David and I, we talk a lot, right, about the project and how to improve it and stuff. And one of the things that we always uh, talk about is how how happy we are with the community. So not only are we, like, doing all of the courses and classes and stuff, but also, like, the community that we're creating is very cool because everyone's very nice. I don't think we've had to ban anyone for being a dick. We've had banned, like, bots and, and scammers, but we have not banned anyone for being like a like a douche. 
so hopefully <laughs> hopefully we keep it that way but yeah we have an amazing amazing discord community twitch community okay so should we do a normal face or should we do an alien what do you guys want let me know I want to talk about like uh, the like how to start on one of these projects because that's a very common question and a very common mistake. A lot of people on the Discord channel, on the Whips channel, they share their their stuff, and I always feel like they're having a little bit of, a, of an issue with with starting uh, processes. So they they just jump straight into details and things like that. So as you can see um, here, I've just created a basic uh, silhouette, and and the silhouette is one of the first things that you need to make sure that you have uh, as a clean effect. Aki Senpai says, how was your family, Abe? Did they support you for leaving medical and go for 3D? <laughs> um, see, Aki, I'm going to share something with you. It was not until last year, last year, I'm talking about 12 years after I've been doing this, that my dad, when, when he saw that I launched this new brand and that we were getting all of this community and all of this um, uh, effects or all of this uh, support, he was like, I can finally see. He literally said, and I quote, he said, I can finally see that what you're doing makes sense from a lot of views, but especially from a sort of like financial view, right? Like you can make a living out of this. It was like, I just believe in this thing after 12 years, even though I've been working as a professional for like eight years now, um, he was like, I just now realize that it is possible to, to do this. <laughs> I was like, thanks, dad. I mean, he did pay for the school and everything, so he he had to believe somehow. But it was <laughs> it was very funny. Um, Lemon Sue, how can I have a one on one session with you? You can contact me on Discord. Just send me a, a direct message on, on Discord. Join the Discord channel, of course. Send me a direct message, and we can schedule it um, for next week. I, I don't have any more slots this week, but next week I can accommodate you. Normal face says Murhanuddin, but then we have Alien on YouTube. Well, let's talk about like basics. So as I was mentioning, silhouette when doing a character is very important. And it, it's one of those things that a lot of people neglect. And there's two types of, um, this is a very important lesson. I learned this lesson from a, an amazing, amazing concert artist. His name is Jared Krzyzewski. You probably have seen his work. He was my Seabrush teacher. Hey, there we go. So Jared is a, a 3D concept artist. He has worked in a bunch of very famous films. He did like Godzilla and like uh, the, the remake for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like he's done a lot, a lot of stuff. And um, he, he does, I'm not sure if he does production models. I'm pretty sure he mostly does um, concept art models. So yeah, yeah, Krzyzewski was my, my I, I have him on Facebook and everything. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a really cool dude. So... So he mentions that something very interesting happens with uh, silhouettes. There's paint. There we go. So when you have, if you remember, let's talk about two very famous silhouettes, Alien and Predator, right? So Alien has a very complex silhouette. It's a very bad rendition of the Alien bed. It has a very complex silhouette. But if you look at the internal details, it's all black, sort of like skin, leather, and things like that. So we have complex silhouette, simple, like internals, let's call it. The Predator, on the other hand, he's pretty much a human. So the silhouette of the Predator, it's a very simple silhouette but a really complex internal. He has like meshes and weapons and grenades and hooks and toots and stuff. So that's sort of like a balance that you can have on your design process. If you're gonna have a very simple alien design, like just like a very basic uh, effect right here, then you can go with a very complex internal shapes and uh, and I don't know, like crazy eyes and lines and things to, to make it really interesting and, and complex, right? However, if you're going to go for a very complex shape, then you try to keep things a little bit cleaner. Now, what's the best like a way or one of the best ways to get inspiration? Nature. So one thing I like to do is I just look for uh, like weird animals. And you find like really, really interesting things, really interesting animals that you could use for your stuff. Some of them are like or might be like AI stuff, um, but like this one. I really like this thing. What's this thing called? I don't know what this thing is called, but that's very fun. 
So I like that. That's kind of like a Cyclops, right? So that tells me it's like, hey, let's do like sort of like a big eye right here. And then he's got like a, like tentacles or things coming out of the face. I'm going to use a snake hook here. And we can have some sort of like tendrils like falling down. Kind of like hair. And then I really like this band that he got, has going back. So let's sketch some, some sort of like pattern that goes all across his back. And there we go. We have three things, three elements that give me like an interesting sort of like look to the whole thing. And, and that's also another sort of like um, very famous thing. I love using this. And I love using this for everything. Um, we humans are very, what's the word? We, we, the, we humans are very like organized or like mathematical structure beings. We, we like to have everything compartmentalized into mental structures that make sense. So I love using the mental structure called the three, two, one. Okay. So the three, two, one is we are going to have three elements. Two of them are going to be important and one of them is going to be a detail. Okay. So in this case, the three elements are the eyes, the tentacles, and the pattern on the back. The two main elements are going to be the eyes and the tentacles. They're going to play with each other. They're going to kind of like support each other. And the third one, which is going to be the, the band right there, is going to be the detail, which is going to, again, allow me to, to create something interesting. And I do this exact same thing, for instance, when I'm planning a, a session for my D&D players. I, I, I plan them by scenes. I was like, okay, what's the scene going to be? I'm, I'm going to show you exactly what's going to happen in my next session. So hopefully my players are not watching. But in the next session, my players need to approach a floating pyramid, which is where the big bad boss is uh, located. And they have to go through a canyon. Okay, so my scene is the canyon. Now I need three elements happening on this scene that are going to make the whole fight interesting. First one, there's going to be a sandstorm. So the visibility is going to be like... a uh, like reduced and it's going to be a little bit difficult for them to see second there's going to be a giant guardian right here and the giant guardian is the guy causing the sandstorm so again three two elements that are playing together and what's going to be the detail that they're going to be pursued so there's pressure so now i've created a scene that has two elements that are playing together challenging my players with a pressure like forcing them to move forward and and go through this scene and well let's see how they solve that issue before they get to the to the pyramid so so that way of, of thinking of, of planning things can be really helpful and i i personally really like um like doing it that way let's of course bring a, a nice sphere there we go let me read do we have uh, by the way sorry i've been like so distracted well not distracted but i've been talking so much do we have questions on the discord so i can take a look at them What do you generally receive questions about softwares but not art fundamentals uh, or how to think about oh because it's it's very um common tranquil that when you're first starting you have more questions about 3d like the the softwares than about art and design as you get older and older and you get a uh, better information you um you start like asking yourself all of those other questions um but yeah like if you guys have questions about design and stuff feel free to ask them as well Everyone decided to ask you. Yeah, I mean, like right now, it's it's kind of manageable, so so that's fine. Okay, so now now that we have the the basic, let's say shapes, now we need to start working about what we call the secondary shapes, right? Like the things that support all of these primary shapes. For instance, on a, on a human skull, there's a very very important bone. It's probably my favorite bone of the whole uh, like face, and this bone is called the zygomatic bone okay it's this one right here and this is super super important because this is kind of like the floor of the eyeball so the eyeball rests on this zygomatic bone of course it like has a lot of other supports but this one's very very important so whenever you add an eyeball to a character there should be some sort of like zygomatic bone and you can see this as a constant in every single skull that you see from any animal so in this particular case i would expect to see a zygomatic bone right here okay and not only is the zygomatic bone important for the support of the of the eye, it's also important for the for the form and the general like silhouette of the face as well. 
So it allows you to create something that looks, again, interesting. Now, I'm guessing this guy would blink somehow, so... He's gonna have to have some sort of, like... Like, eyelid or something, so let's... Let's do something right there. What's your opinion about today's modern art like that banana tape? <laughs> there, There is a very, like, very good book um, about art history. I don't remember the name right here, but I'm going to look it up. I have it. Do I have it here? No, I don't have it here. So on that book, the author talks about art being on a crisis, on a crisis that started on the 20s or 30s, 1920s, 1930s. And... Um, Art has gone from being a... This is an opinion, of course. This is not, like, truth or facts or whatever. But I... Uh, art has gone from being an achievement on how you can capture and create something that speaks to the soul of someone figuratively. Like, you can see and identify what you're looking at to be a more subjective sort of, like, approach. Um, there's a very famous Mexican, very conflictive Mexican art reviewer called Avelina Lesper, and she says that art, you should not need to explain art. Like, if you look at a piece and you don't know what the piece is about, then the piece as art has failed, based on her opinion, right? Some people say no, because everyone should interpret each piece as he's his fit. I'm, I'm, I don't like that approach. I personally like figurative art, so I like seeing something like a sculpture or like a painting and being able to identify what that thing is. Um, I don't mind, like, impressionistic stuff and things like that, but, um, it's just, like, different styles, right? So, that's the problem. Like, nowadays, a lot of art has gone into this sort of, like, figuratively subjective experiences. And, there, I mean, there's a market for it, right? Like, people are buying and, and, and paying for stuff like that, so... I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just saying it's different. It's kind of like games, right? Like, we all like games. You can say, hey, mobile games are not games. Like Angry Birds, it's not a game. Candy Crush, is not a game. But technically, it is a game. It might not be the kind of game that you like. It might not have the kind of game mechanics or game monetization that you approve of. But it is a game. And it is a successful game. We cannot deny that. So so that's the kind of thing that we need to understand about art and about entertainment and anything. Like, did you guys see Poor Things, the movie? <laughs> the, the new movie by... Um, by Emma Stone and um, and this like super fancy director. I went with my wife to see it last week. It's a weird movie. Like it's a really bizarre movie. I'm I can't say that I didn't like it because it was an interesting experience, but it is a very weird movie. So I know that if you show that to like the whole population, not everyone's gonna like it. They're gonna like, what the hell is this? Yeah, Maria says the movie is amazing. Like, I I'm not sure I would personally call it amazing. It's definitely an experience. But it's not something that I would like to watch every weekend or every uh, <laughs> every month, right? So it's just not my style. I know some people really like, for instance, Wes Anderson. I personally don't like Wes Anderson. And that's fine because art is subjective and you can, you can like a lot of stuff. But yeah, that's the uh, Poor Things. It's called Poor Things. It's by Jorgos Latimos. There you go. Mr. Man says, uh, funny enough, it's the most digestible film by Jorgos Latimos. Check out The Lobster of Duke Todd. See, I saw, um, like, I've seen a lot of movies, because, um, of course, I'm, I'm into this medium. Um, my wife hasn't. Like, she's not, like, a super huge movie fan. I mean, she is a huge movie fan, but not that kind of movies. So she was like, I hated it. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. I don't want to see it. I, I didn't. I, I just thought it was, like, a, a bad movie. And I was like, no, it was not a bad movie. It was definitely a, a very, very interesting movie. And I think it does deserve to win awards and stuff because it's very freaking, like, original. It, it revolutionizes, like, the way we see things, I think. It's, it's a really fresh take on cinema which is what I think should be awarded, like when people do crazy stuff like that. But again, it's not for everyone. Do you have to know how to draw to learn and be good in 3D? You don't have to, but it does help quite a bit. So if you can learn a little bit, just on the side, just to be able to express an idea, it's very important. I'm going to give you a perfect example of why this is important in Trump. 
one of the things that I do the most nowadays is I have to go with meetings or I have to be on Zoom meetings with clients to propose or, or pitch ideas for projects, right? Like I'm, I've mentioned this before, but in the last couple of years, my my career has shifted from an artist to a producer. That's why if you go on LinkedIn, it says 3D producer, because my job now is to nail or get projects, create a small team to make those projects real, and then direct the have the art direction and help with the development of the project to to deliver it so when you're on a restaurant with a client and they're like oh i don't picture it you need to grab a freaking napkin and you need to draw and be like this is what i meant it's like oh yeah okay i can see it so if you don't have that or if your scribbles are very like basic then you miss on those sort of like opportunities and i remember that was one of the like uh that was one of the um, like uh, reasons my, my perspective teacher would tell us that it was important to know perspective. It's like, dude, you might be on a client's meeting. They're going to p- ask you to pitch something. And if you can draw a cube to save your life, then it's just going to be difficult for you to nail that project. You're going to miss it. And whoever can draw will get the project, which might not be you. Okay. So um, let's see. Yeah, exactly. As Jack says, being able to make a basic sketch animatic, a sketch animatic, or a just like a like a doodle of, of what you mean by a design. Um, like on the on the character that I'm working on right now, I I did a doodle first, and I, I think I showed it to to Sarn. It's like, hey, let's do this, and he was like, yeah, that looks cool. Otherwise, it's very difficult to to picture what you're gonna do, and and this is one of the things that again you learn <laughs> with age and with practice in this in this 3D world. The um, the more you spend on the planning stages of, of whatever project it is you're doing, the easier the whole or the rest of the element is going to be. If you just jump straight into Seabrush or into Maya to model things and you don't plan ahead on how you're going to handle topology or how you're going to handle your forms or your details, then you're going to be fighting against the software. You're going to lose a lot of time trying to make it work. So my advice, or one of my best advices, is spend enough time doing your research, understanding what tools are you going to be using, what techniques are you going to be managing, and with that, the, the execution of the project is going to be way better. And this is not something that I invented. This has been done in other, like, um, what's the word, in other jobs for a long time. Carpenters, architects, all of them, they have a huge, like, planning stage to make sure that they get things right before jumping and doing the project. Otherwise, things will just fail. Have you watched a show named Black Mirror? Yes, of course. I mean, come on, it's Black Mirror. Not every single um, episode, but I've watched uh, several of it, yes. Clients are not artists. They care about the results of increasing sales. Our job's creative is to help people excited about the project or product to help land a sale. That's right. And that's another thing that uh, people, again, they need to understand. There's a huge difference, and I always mention this, about art that you do for art's sake. Okay, so let's say you're an artist and you're inspired and you want to create something that inspires you in art that you make to make money. So a lot of the reasons why people are mad right now at the gaming industry, other than the layoffs, of course, is because a lot of the studios, they are not worried about creating a a magnificent game that revolutionizes gaming. They just want money. And you can't blame them because they are investing a lot of money on on their products. So even though I don't particularly find Call of Duty as innovative or interesting, Like, what they're doing makes perfect sense for the type of product that they're offering. If you want to experience, like, more adventurous things, then you're probably going to have to go more into the indie department. But if you want a AAA game that revolutionizes things and stuff, that's that's not something you're going to find. Not even in Nintendo. I think Nintendo is probably the one that still keeps a lot of that, like, magic true to its its name. But even then, like, they play it very safe. Like, you know every Zelda is going to be a great Zelda, but it's nothing like super, super, super revolutionizing. I know uh, Tears of the Kingdom was really cool with its whole like physics and construction thing, but even that like it was, it was like I don't know. I, I just feel like sometimes that difference between doing something for money and doing something for art is is quite notable in a lot of things. Artful nerd is asking. Uh, big fan here. I was making texture maps in Substance, but the armor and cloth normal AoE got projected on its body. Yeah, because you need to split them. You need to go into Maya or Blender, 
all of your low polys, you're gonna call them underscore low, and all of your high polys, you're gonna call them underscore high. And then inside of substance, you're gonna do something called match by name. And that will only bake things that are like part of the same name, and you will not have that sort of like overlapping thing. Should we add a math to this character right here? He's definitely gonna be blue, right? There we go. I'm not sure if we should add a, a mouth. It's definitely a, a sort of like aquatic character. So gills would be important. There we go. Yesterday I played Helldivers 2 that released. The lighting installed in that game inspired me a lot. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of like very cool things that AAA games are doing. And we should all learn from those. But again, like you should not expect like there are there is a market and a public for every type of like content out there. Same to what we were talking about the movie, like uh, poor things. It might be like an amazing movie and it probably will win several Oscars and stuff. But that's not going to be Avenger levels of success. Right. And I'm sure the, the director knows that, like he's not expecting his movie to be um, like netting him uh, like millions and millions and millions of dollars. As long as the people who he thinks are, uh, who he thinks uh, his opinions are important, uh, value the movie, he is gonna be happy. Do you have any other hobbies outside of 3D, like painting or music, Mr. Man? Yes, I really like uh, painting miniatures uh, for for my D and D games. I really like reading. I really like chess. Uh, actually, I'm a little bit of a an addict to chess so i need to block the side every now and then when i need to work because otherwise i get too distracted um what else board games i really like board games and video games of course i've been playing a grand blue fantasy this last couple of days really cool game like that that's the kind of games that i really like okay now as you can see guys we already have a lot of like the primary forms done and now we're jumping into uh, secondary forms or tertiary forms, which are the things that mix or or blend together all of the primary forms. And I want you to take a, a special or like a moment to see something here. I have not increased my resolution. That's a very common mistake that people do when they're sculpting things. They increase the resolution very quickly. I don't increase my resolution until I'm completely sure that I need to. And you can see like we've been able to create this very cool character with not a lot of resolution and it's already very clear like if you see this enemy on the like on the back of a game like that's perfectly fine it's perfectly <laughs> that that works perfectly like really really nicely should we add a mouth i'm not sure what do you think mouth or no mouth creeper art 69 what's up man welcome to the stream do you like rpgs yeah my favorites oh i would say in this past couple of years my favorites have been the xenoblade games i'm like freaking freaking huge fan of them uh, no mouth, says Maria. Um, I played Baldur's Gate, but to be honest, I, I mean, I really like it. I haven't finished it because it's it's one of those games that you really need to sit down and, and pay attention to. And I have a little kid, so it's a little bit difficult to do that sometimes. Well, that's why I prefer like shorter games. Uh, Paper Mario, super fan of uh, the Paper Mario games. Really excited about the remake. What else? Um, there was another one that I played recently. I've been playing a lot more like action games nowadays. Like um, last year, I played a lot of Monster Hunter with my brother. We're you're huge fans of the of the Monster Hunter franchise as well. No video cam character looks flattering up close. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Mouth looks good, resembling a bit like a swamp thing. Yeah, but I think cause I don't want to sculpt it instead of the mouth, so I'm gonna be lazy here, <laughs> and I'm gonna remove the mouth. Maybe he just like speaks telepathically or something. Okay, now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to bring. There we go, Johan. Thanks for the sub, man. Welcome to the stream. I heard the tip on Insta. He said use noise option very lightly and don't apply. It will give you a visual satisfaction while sculpting. Interesting. Let's try that. Noise. Mm, surface nice yeah I guess that could work I mean I'm not a huge fan of it but it could definitely work 
Do you think that sometimes this sculpture in a lower resolution looks cooler than when you increase its resolution due to the brush marks you left on it? Yeah, mustache. And, and that uh, is a very common thing that happens with um, drawing as well. So if you compare a sketch like this to a line art and the line art is not as clean, you will see that the sketch looks way more interesting. Um, there was a, there's a Spanish influencer or a content creator. I don't remember her name. She's an architect, I think. Um, but she talks about the Dalmatians. So if you remember the 100 old Dalmatians like this, the, the movie, one of the reasons why this movie looked very nice or very interesting was because it was very rough. Like they saved time. They cut costs on the, on the cleaning of the elements and they left a lot of the construction lines of the elements and you can see them. Like, look at that. You can see the line going down the back of the little dog, and it looks very sketchy. Even the backgrounds, look at that. They don't even, like, feel it properly. It's just like a, kind of like a painting, kind of like a doodle. So, I personally love this style. I, I love when things look sketchy, when they don't look, like, finished. And, and that's why sometimes when you, when you start increasing the, what's the word, the resolution, you're going to find some issues. And that's why, again, you need more time to, to make sure that the, 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 the um, that you polish everything. Yeah, I love that movie too, Maria. It's a, it's a very, very fun movie. Okay, so now we're, we can increase resolution. So I'm going to increase resolution a little bit. And here's where we can start, like, playing with, with this sort of things. Where's my little blue guy? Oh, there we go. So you can see on this guy's right here, there's a lot of like organic sort of like folds and wrinkles and things like that. Not too many. That's another thing that people sometimes like uh, overdo it. And and you need to also think about the one, two, threes. So my one is all of this forms right here. My twos are the tentacles. My threes are going to be this wrinkles that I'm going to start adding right here. But I don't need to add wrinkles everywhere. So I'm just going to have some big volumes in certain areas. And then other areas are not going to have that information. And we cover this quite a bit on the, on the ZBrush course. So if you guys... Want to learn about like sculpting or paints or for games or for anything? I really think that the Oni course teaches a lot of the fundamentals. Someone was asking on, on YouTube, was like, oh, why don't people ask about like the fundamentals of design? In my courses, and, and you can ask anyone here in the chat, I always talk about like the whys of, of, of the things. I, of course, teach tools, but I also teach why we need to understand the tools. And that's another thing that I, I got from, from my time at school. They were very... They were huge proponents of not being uh, button monkeys. Like the idea was that you only, that you learn the tools, of course, but you understand why you're using those tools. And if you do that, if you understand the tools, then you were gonna be a better artist because you could use the tools to generate the, the results that were, you, you were looking for. And that's very funny. I, I actually don't think I've mentioned this. The first time I went to Noman, I got rejected. It was early 2012, I think, when I go to Noman, and I got rejected. They told me, yeah, your portfolio is not good enough. Back in the day, the filter, I'm not sure if the filter is still like really like tough or not, but back in the day, it was like, yeah, you need to improve. You, you're missing stuff. So I spent another like six months polishing my, my traditional portfolio. They were, they were looking for a traditional portfolio at the time, and, um, and that's when, when I got in. So happy for my friends that released Helldivers 2 yesterday after working eight years on it. I worked with them on Helldivers 1 and wrote the music. Hey, that's cool, Johan. I haven't checked it out. I saw a little bit of the of the reviews and I saw that it was trending very nicely on Steam. And yeah, I'm always happy with, with all of the projects that artists release. Because that's the thing, guys. Like, even in, in horrible projects, like, uh, I know right now there's a lot of flack going for, for the Justice League game, the Kill the Justice Leagues. You need to understand that the decisions that made that game or that are making that game a bad game most of the times were not decisions that the artists made. So, so yeah, we can talk shit about anything that you want, monetization, content, and stuff like that, but it's not the programmer's fault. It's not the artist's fault. It's usually the producers and the directors that make those decisions. I'm currently doing some superheroes and it's all smooth, but I hope to find a balance between sketchy and the polished forms of the personal work. Yeah. Teaching requires the skills of teaching itself as well. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Maria. And and uh, I, I think that's one of the like the nice comments that I've been getting this past couple of years. Like, oh, you're a really good teacher. 
and I really appreciate it. I hope I am. <laughs> I hope I, I make things as clean, uh, as clear and as, as um, interesting as possible. I'm really liking this guy. I mean, not to brag, but it's looking quite interesting. I was not expecting it to to turn it as nice. But there's a, another very famous quote. Um, there's another very famous quote on that says that inspi I think this was uh, Picasso it says inspiration will find you working. That's why you need to start. Just start sculpting. Find something. Do something. And once you you do that, you're gonna find something interesting like this. Anjana, what's up, man? A little bit late, don't worry. Remember, guys, all of this, uh, like the, the stream and everything, is going to be on YouTube um, tomorrow. I'm not sure if it's, it's immediately available, but if not, it's going to be tomorrow uh, so that you can watch the full stream as well. We, we went through a, a, a journey on the Vault of Memories. I showed uh, a couple of the of the pieces that I've been doing as an artist for the past... Fuck, 13 years? <laughs> And now we're doing this cool alien right here. Now, this is one of those characters that if I were to make this for film or for games, I would do it with the eyes closed. You probably have seen some uh, like people sculpting their characters with their eyes closed. That's for rigging purposes, to make rigging a little bit easier, because it's easier to bring the eyelid back than it's to stretch it forward. So in this particular case, I would probably do it maybe not super close, but a lot closer. And here's how you can do it. You can just grab your uh, mass lasso. I'm going to lasso out the top of the, of the eyelid. Move the pivot point as close as possible to the center of the sphere. You can turn on transparency to find the center of the sphere and then rotate this down see that so that like rotates nicely forward and then i'm gonna do the exact same thing with the lower eyelid same position and just push it up oh probably a little bit farther out actually it's fine but now this eyelid is way way too far forward but it's important to try to keep the the effect right there and now we just rework it so again this is for for rigging purposes it's a lot easier to to do the character like this with the eyes like semi-closed or closed because then we can retopologize all of this area and when we do the the rig and everything it's going to be easier to to bring this thing down and kind of like collapse it into itself than it is to be to stretch it all the way forward you're welcome, Maria. Have a good one. I'll see you guys next week. We're still here. I'm just saying goodbye to Maria. I was sculpting on Silvershade T-Rex, but, but for some reason, the poly mesh has become very dense, even though the dynamesh resolution... That's because of the size. So if you scale your model up, even if you keep the same resolution, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it uh, way denser. So that's probably that's probably that. Do you use Sculptus Pro often? No, not really. Every now and then, sometimes with like, uh, with that, uh, what's the word? Um, with like the, fuck, forgot about the name, a snake hook. Now, someone was asking, uh, what do you think about sculpting with a mouse? If you're sculpting with a mouse, I'm going to ban you on the Discord server. That's it. <laughs> like, there's absolutely no need to, to sculpt with a mouse. Like, it's, it's one of the most, like self-hurting things that you can do to yourself is just gonna limit your your ability to create cool stuff. Um, I do know that, of course, you need to invest on a on a software, on a tablet, right, on a pen display or something. And and I know like money is tight for everyone, right? However, though, like that's one of the investments. Like if I had to start from scratch with just a laptop and um, and a very like a simple computer, one of the first things that I would buy would be a tablet. Like you need a tablet. There's absolutely no questions about it. I'm going to continue the pattern to the eye. And I kind of want the pattern to continue like down here. I feel like that could be an interesting sort of like effect where he closes the eye and kind of like the pattern is completely filled. <laughs> Don't ban me, says Anjana. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But yeah, like just to save a little bit of money and buy some tablets. Huion has some very affordable like normal tablets. And even the pen displays are really good. So that's the brand I've been using for 
couple of years now and i really like it wacom of course has some ones some nice ones as well they're a little bit more pricier but they do have some affordable options too um i know some people use xp pen i haven't personally used xp pen to be honest so i i can't really comment on their quality overwatch character ilaria was fully made with the mouse oh i i did not want to be in that position like i know you can do it like i i've seen people do like amazing things with the mouse but uh yeah exactly mustache has like perfectly perfectly um like a sum it up like sculpting with a mouse is like riding a bicycle with your hands can you do it definitely is it the most efficient way to do it probably not but i mean i've seen people do painting or i've seen people paint in paint like you know like paint and do amazing things with it or in excel it's like i don't know why you would like to do that but hey you do you i don't i don't mind uh, creeper says sculpting is low-key intimidating it is but once you understand the tools it can become a lot easier and very relaxing i would say I, I love sculpting like sculpting is my favorite part of the of the 3d process sculpting and texturing i would say i really I, i've been enjoying texturing more and more as the time has passed as well okay here we definitely need to create like a, another support for the eye kind of like the The upper side or something. Abel Fry, what's up, man? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Let's do a quick save before anything bad happens. Yeah, that, that's one of the... Aki says, I'm using XP Pen, and damn, my fucking stylus just fuck up four times in a year. They replaced and advised me to not use stylus button, use keyboard button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, again, like, I, you could be, like, very unfortunate. I've had that happen before with a graphics card that failed twice. Like, it failed once, they sent me a replacement, it failed again, that sent me another replacement. So, it can happen that you get a couple of, like, defective uh, technological pieces. But, yeah, it sucks, like... Like, if they're telling you not to use a feature that you're expecting to use, then, yeah, that's uh, that's not a great sign. I have XP Pen Deco L and a Wacom Intuos M, and I'm using the XP Pen at the moment. Only bad thing is, with it, sometimes it loses the key mapping for the pen, which is pretty annoying. So I'm going, I'm going back to the Wacom sometime soon. Yeah, I... I um... We got this one. I showed it before, which is the XP Pen. Not XP Pen. Huion <laughs> Canvas 13. That's the 2.5K version. It's very good. You might want to check it out because the price is uh, quite. I would say it's quite affordable for a pen display. I remember a couple of years ago, pen displays were very, very expensive. But now they're a lot more affordable. Okay, here I'm, I'm just adding random shapes and forms. I'm not really giving it too much thought. Just making an interesting silhouette. Again, again because we have a very simple silhouette, right? Uh, and that's why I really like using this little thing right here. You can also go and change this to flat color. So since we have a very simple silhouette, like the silhouette is, is quite like easy, um, that means that we can go a little bit crazier on the, on the inner details. And I'm not thinking about adding any sort of like props or anything. It's just an alien. So so that's why we need to, to play with, with textures and stuff. This, these are like tentacles, the first two, and then these are not tentacles, they're more like ridges or flaps or something. Alpha says, I also use Huion 13, but not the Pro. It's a really good in my opinion. Yeah, the size has been really nice because I, I have a, a Huion Canvas 16, the, the normal version as well, and it was a little bit too big for my desk. Now I have it with my laptop and it's, it's quite nice over there but it is a little bit too big. So unless you're doing a lot of drawing and you want to have like a lot of space, the 13 inches is really, really good. By the way, you guys on YouTube are seeing everything right because on my preview here, it says that the stream hasn't even started yet. I hope you, let me know if you, if you are seeing it properly. Anyone on YouTube, please, please, just uh, let me know if the if the stream is working. Oh, there you go, Jacksway. There you go. Nice, Lemon Soup. Thank you. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, I'm always a huge fan of using any opportunity that you can. 
So, oh, thanks, thanks, Arn. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I remember uh, at Noman, it was very common when people graduated, they would just like leave their their art stuff for for free. Like, I don't know, they were giving away clay or, or brushes or pencils or whatever. I would always try to get something if I could. Because not only do you save money, you also just reuse things and we reduce waste. Have you ever done a likeness bust? Yes, we did one a couple years ago for a project, but it was a, a random guy, like a like an entrepreneur here in Mexico, and he wanted like a like a three D print of his face. And then we did some soccer players as well, but they were a little bit low poly. Thanks for the follow, Rick Shoshan. Don't you need more resolution for the details you're adding? Yes, a little bit. I, I'm just sketching the the details. I'm not really like adding them right now. Just a general sketch to to feel the character. Like right now, I think the silhouette can really be improved a little bit by just moving a couple of things. Thank you, Creeper. See you on the next one, man. Thanks for being here. So I'm gonna push, especially from the front view. I kind of wanna create like this or like. Curvature dressed, you know. Again, following this, like I really like this sort of like star shape element. So I'm gonna like push a little bit of that. So when you see it from the top, we get a little bit of that sort of like like feel or effect. Again, this, are, this could be probably just like card latches or something, like they don't move or anything. That's one of the things, or of the cool things about sci-fi. As long as it just kind of makes sense, it's fine. Sci-fi, a teacher used to explain this, sci-fi is science with magic. <laughs> it's like, it works because science and magic. And fantasy is, it works because magic. So in this case, as long as it has a little bit of an explanation, it's like, yeah, that's cartilage. Oh, okay, that, that makes sense. Oh, well, yeah, he, like, talks telepathically. Oh, okay, that, that makes sense. So no need no need to worry too much about all the details because it's science fiction. If you want to do, like, realistic stuff, then you have to think about, like, the whole system. Which is also possible. There's been games and directors that do that, which is very cool, but not always necessary. Fractal says, hello and greetings. I'm working in the game developing industry as a 3D character artist. Basically, those things you are learning is for nothing. Because automatization is eating everything up. Um, Yes, yes. I mean, AI is definitely hitting the world in a, in a really interesting way. And it's going to change the way we do things. But it's not going to eat everything up. There's still, I mean, if you think about it. People thought the same thing about digital cameras back in the day. And there's still people doing traditional cameras. People thought the same thing about traditional painting, like oil painting. And there's people still doing oil painting. Like, come on. Like, there's even still people doing uh, traditional sculpting, like with marble and stuff. So, yes, a lot of people might not be able to continue doing this. And things will change. But if you find a niche or if you try to have an offer that allows you to keep doing it, then it's still going to be here. I mean, I've seen people still doing programming in like um, like old school like um, um, languages. Of course, it's not. it might not be as profitable as a AAA game, but it, it doesn't mean that it's going to go away. Another thing that you need to consider, Fractal, and this is something that um, a lot of people don't see, is that, yeah, we will still need to manually optimize, but we need to understand that right now the entertainment industry is very centralized. Everything is happening either in the United States and Canada or in uh, China and Japan, right? Like those are like the three big hubs of, of work, a little bit of in, in Europe, of course. But there's so many other countries that will still be doing 3D, 
the traditional way for smaller projects, for smaller applications, for smaller games, for smaller demonstrations or whatever. So even if the big studios, the big things that we hear about are doing that, that doesn't mean that everyone's going to be doing it. I'm going to give you another example. Have you guys seen these things? Have you seen these things, right? The Vision Pro? Like, everyone's talking about the Vision Pro right now. And I've seen influencers on YouTube and on TikTok being like, in a couple of years, everyone on the streets is going to be wearing one of this. And this is going to be the new way in which we're going to be living. And this is going to revolutionize the human history. Their view is so, so, so narrow. Because they live, and we all live, in a bubble, right? Like, we all live in a special type of environment where we think that oh, that's those are the things that are making the the big changes but i'm gonna give you a very a very like a uh, sad taste of reality this is oaxaca it's a very beautiful uh, state here in mexico do you think people living here in oaxaca care about the vision pro they don't give a shit they have probably never used like most people have probably never used even a virtual reality like set like the meta quest or whatever so we thinking that these things are going to be the killers of every other technology and everyone's going to be using them like come on like no that's not real and the same thing happens with ai like do you think everyone in the world is going to be using ai no there's going to be studios that think no i, I just want to do it traditionally and and that's like totally fine They can scold for hobbing, not for paying the bill. That's my point. Yeah, and, and I, I understand your 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 point, man. Again, I feel that it will change things. It might not be as easy to pay the bills for certain like industries and in certain places. Probably LA, Seattle, things like that. Because, again, bills are very expensive as well. But that doesn't mean that the whole industry is just going to collapse and no one's ever going to be producing things um, the traditional way. So, again... Again, that's that's my point or my opinion. I know we can discuss this ad nauseum as well. Manorito says, hola, buenas tardes. ¿Cuándo vas a convocar un concurso de modelado en el canal? Saludos. We are, um, we, we had a contest last year and it was good. I made a couple of mistakes uh, or we learned a couple of lessons as well. So we're going to be improving on that. But for that to happen, we need to have a little bit more interaction on the on the streams and on the on the Discord as well. So hopefully soon. Let's see if we can do it for March or something like that. Oh, I really like that sort of like cut that I added there. It gives me a flashback to the first player ready movie. Yeah, and, and again, even if you see that movie, not everyone was on that sort of like virtual reality world. Like there's so many other things that um, that are needed for this stuff. And one of the things about AI, guys, remember, AI will get you a very nice result. But if you want to polish that result, you're still going to need someone that knows how to modify that result and make it better. A personal question, just because you have like, any kids? Yes, I have a, a small kid. She is uh, about to be three years old. Just one kid. How important is compositing in general for post-production, for films and uh, ads and commercials and things like that? It's very, very important. For games, I would say it's very important on the lightning department because you can use a lot of post effects to to create like very, very cool things. So it, it is important. It's very niche though. So if you, if you want to be a compositor, I would suggest you grab a couple of extra skills as well because just doing compositing might not cut it. And, and that's another thing, uh, talking about AI. One of the things that's going to happen is AI will make a lot of jobs easier, and that will allow us to specialize in other things. So before, when you needed, I don't know, five artists to do a, a, a work, you might only need um, like two artists to do the same thing because AI is going to make it a little bit easier. But that also means that those other artists could now potentially use that uh, free time to do other things. That's one of the things that I don't like about this AI discussion, that everyone... I feel like there's a little bit of entitlement going around. It's like, companies should hire me because I'm a good artist and I don't want AI to replace me. Cool. I mean, if you're a good artist, you could also try doing your own stuff. Like, why do you want to depend on a company to be hiring you? Because as I mentioned before, companies, the, the, the goal of a company is to make money. If And if they can make money without you, they're going to do it with AI or without it. Like, unfortunately, that's the, the world we live in. So... That's where you can start offering your value 
somewhere else in a different way. Again, just my opinion. These are a little bit more controversial opinions, but just it's important to have this sort of discussions. Always keeping them simple, of course, and understanding that everyone else's mileage will vary. Like, no one will be... Like, everyone will have a different experience. Because I'm sure there's going to be someone out there that's going to like, Oh, AI ruined my life. It took everything away from me. It's like, oh, well, in that case, yeah, I, I feel sorry for you, man. It sucks. But there's someone out there that's going to be like, AI changed my life. He gave me tools and the ability to create something that I could never have done otherwise. So, whose side are you going to be on? I'm always on the on the ethical side of things. Like I'm completely against AI stealing job or like stealing a work to to build their like databases and stuff. Like that that's fucked up. But we've been using AI for a long time. It's just that it's the first time that it's really like affected us as artists. Cuz no one was complaining about AI with like Google Maps and navigations and things like that, but I remember um here in Mexico there was this this um, map called the Guia Roja. It was a huge map that you could buy. Like, map makers are now obsolete. Technology has made them obsolete because now you just grab your phone and it's there. And what, are, are they going to just, like, keep complaining about that for the rest of their lives or are they just going to adapt and do something about it? That's my my take. Let's see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Um, do you recommend any universities which offer specialization in 3D model and sculpting? At Noman, of course. I mean, I learned a lot of the stuff. Not everything, but I learned a lot of the stuff um, that I know about at Noman. It is expensive. Yes, it is expensive. Back in the day, it was not as expensive. Now, with how econom ec economics have shifted after the pandemic and things like that, it's can definitely be a little bit more expensive than it was before. Um, BFS is also really good. Vancouver Film School. Think Tank. Vertex. Of course, my courses. <laughs> if you want to check them out, uh, Limon Soup, I got the... the um, What's the word? I got the Seabrush course, where we talk a, little, a lot about the sculpting props and everything. Aki says, yes, I have the same opinion. Like, if AI becomes so capable, if I can make my own game using AI or short film using AI, now I have more opportunity, right? Now I alone can do things where I might need 5, 10 people. Yeah, you will... Um... Oh, there you go, Lemon. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it will... Um, it, it's, it's something that's very common. It, it's going to um, do something called democratization, right? Like, it democratizes the opportunity for everyone to be able to create something. And, and this is something that I remember... Uh, I, I actually like faced a little bit of racism when, when I was at Noman. There was a guy that made a comment, not directly to me, but I heard it backhand. It was like a backhand comment. And he was like, how come a Mexican, you guys know a Mexican, is coming here and doing this like cool stuff? Like he's going to be taking our jobs. We shouldn't allow this to happen as much and stuff. I was like, dude, that's very racist. E everyone shut him up like very quickly. Again, I was not exactly there. But that's the truth, right? Like if, if someone in another part of the world can do what Hollywood studios have been doing for a long time. Hey, I mean, Hollywood needs to step up their game, right? Like, you, you should not allow someone to take out your, your job that way. Um, and that means that you need to offer something that someone else cannot do. And that's your responsibility. It's not the AI's fault. Yeah, yeah, it was a he was a very douchey guy. He didn't like even finish. He got um, he was he was complaining about a, a students from all over the world, like coming to Nome and, and learning about it. He like he was not expelled or anything, but he he just didn't have what it took to to do it. Yeah, certification. Those schools that I mentioned, Lemon Soup, those could be really, really good options. Like that's the that's the certification that I have right there. That's my my Nomen certificate. In creative fields such as this, if people hold opinions like that, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's really. But I've heard those in everywhere. Like, here's the thing, guys. I, I know we are uh, panicking about AI taking our jobs. Have you seen how all of the other industries, like all of the other careers, are also struggling? Like, do you have, for instance, 
like friends who went to medicine school have they shared with you how the situation is with like medicine in general in the world like i have friends of mine that finish school like med school and now they're doing other things because med school is no longer paying i've had um lawyer students uh, that like the studied law and now they're doing they're like selling tacos i don't know like unfortunately we are living in a time where due to the way that capitalism and technology and everything is, is working studying something no longer guarantees that you might make it unfortunately and that's not my fault it's not your fault it's no one else's fault it's like the system's fault and unless something like really tragical happens it's it's not gonna change so you just gotta like play with the cards that you're given and and, and I remember this was something that I heard like not too long ago from another like influencer and they were like um, the only way you can ensure that you're gonna fail is if you stop trying because if you stop trying doing whatever it is that you want to do then that's it that's game over like you're not gonna know whether you made it or not but if you keep trying you can make it you can also not make it but it's the best odds that you have at making it to keep trying <laughs> Um, and, and that's, uh, that's what I, I always tell my wife and my friends when they ask me about what I'm doing. It's like, Hey, I mean, I'm trying, I'm, I'm grinding, I'm, I'm doing it. And if, if ever comes to a point where this is no longer profitable or whatever, well, I'm going to have to make a choice. But if I don't try, then there's no way if I'm going to know if it's going to work. I'm waiting for my own AI therapies robot. I need one robot who can motivate me. <laughs> What are you sculpting? I'm sculpting, I don't know, some sort of alien. It's inspired on this like little blue thingy. Where is it? This guy right here. So I took that as a little bit of an inspiration and now, now we're here. But we're we're about to, to finish in just a couple of minutes, guys. So if you have more questions, now's your chance. Last last time to, to get um what's the word? Last time to do it. There's great concern in Brazil about dubbing films, and to be honest, I do believe that AI will soon be able to replace voice actors. Again, the only another thing that I find that's very important in this whole process is we need to vote with our wallets, right? Like, since AI is just a push from an economic perspective to again to to save money and make more profit on other things. So if you don't like something because it's using AI, don't consume it. Make it make it um what's the word? Um, be vocal about it. Be like, hey, this is not something that I want to consume and I'm not going to consume it. That's it. And eventually, people realize, hey, people don't value AI as much. They prefer, even if it's more costly, they prefer things be being made like traditionally and that will be valuable. Support indie developers. Because that's the thing, right? Like, I can go to Steam right now and, and go into the indie section, and I'm going to see some games, and I'll be like, oh, no, I don't like the quality of these textures. I don't like the quality of these models. I'm not going to support this project because I, I feel like the writing is a little bit amateurish. Well, I mean, if you don't want that, that's fine. But if you're just going to consume Call of Duty or, or Fortnite or things that are done or could be done with uh, AI, then you are part of the problem. You are part of the, um, of the issue here on the industry because you're expecting to have a really high quality that cannot be economically justified and you don't want to pay the price. So that's the problem. So you got to be mindful of that. Um, the version does not make too much of a difference, Scratcher X, at least from 2021 to, to now, to 2024. There are a couple of tools that you might be missing, but it shouldn't be that much. We have a question on Discord. Let's see. Uh, 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 um, let me go. Where is it? Stream Q&A. Um, I was baking texture maps. Oh, yeah, I, I already answered that one. Um, I was baking texture maps in substance, but the armor and cloud normals AOE got projected. That's because we need to do a separate show. I'm going to cover that quite a bit on the new substance course that it's going to be uh, releasing soon. I haven't I haven't checked that one, uh, Lemon Soup, so I'm not sure. Um, but check the curriculum. Check who is teaching. Check the classes. Check if the content is um, is something that you're looking for. 
And uh, well, that's it, guys. We're gonna stop right here. This was the end of our, of our sculpting session. Really cool character. This would, this would be a very, very cool 3D print as well. Um, I'm probably gonna polish it. Maybe you'll see it in, in one of our tutorials soon. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. You have one more last question. While I save this, let me know. Because we're about to finish our Friday live stream, which was a very, very fun one. We, we covered a lot of stuff. A little bit of a trip down memory lane and then and then some sculpting. Remember, next uh, Friday, we're going to have a portfolio review. That one's going to be important as well. Let me save this as... Watic Alien. There we go. There you go, guys. Thank you very much for the stream. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks for the follows, for the cheers. Thanks for everything. Remember, if you want to check some of our premium courses, they're available at our site, avleo3d.com. And I'll see you on the Discord channel if you have any questions. Some people that were asking about mentorships, you can, again, send me a DM on Discord, and I'll be happy to give you more information about that. Have a great weekend, my friends. Practice, keep learning, keep improving. I'll see you back.